Why Ride in the Edge? Well, today we're going to be talking about the origins of Ride in the Edge. Let's come along for the ride. My name is David Patton. When I started photography, I wanted to make art. I wanted to be a landscape photographer. But with a family to feed and bills to pay, I decided it would be better to be a working photographer than a starving artist. So I took a job as a photojournalist. 25 years and thousands of assignments later, it was time to go back to my first love. It was time to follow my passion. Come along on my journey to become the best black and white photographer I can be. Whether it be film or digital, I will be sharing what I learned through my successes and my failures in hopes to inspire and educate. This is my journey. This is right in the edge. I wouldn't blame you if you thought, what is right in the edge? <laughs> what does that have to do with photography? Well, today we're going to be talking about that. We're going to talk about the origins of right in the edge. It is kind of a weird name for a, a YouTube channel and a, a website based on photography. Well, Nori and I are out for a little, little puppy training on the leash out in the woods. This is actually her first, her maiden Maiden Voyage, her first little outing. The light is not very good today. So we're gonna take advantage of the nice weather, terrible light, and we're gonna get her a little training out here. We're, gonna, we're doing a little walk. And I'm gonna tell you the story of the origins of Riding the Edge. Now way back, way, way back in 2007, I was working as a staff photographer for a daily newspaper. And in the summer, we used to uh, do um, kind of fun projects, stuff that uh, we didn't have time to do when things were busy. Summer was kind of our, our slow, slow time. And myself and uh, editor Steve Lundenberg, we would get together and we'd come up with these little projects that we thought would be fun, we thought the readers might like. We had these um, sessions where we'd just get together and throw out ideas and come up with something. And, and these stories were supposed to be on a section front. And they were usually a series. It was, it was just a way to get the uh, readers to um, want to pick up the paper, you know, and be looking forward to the next installment. And in one of these sessions, I came up with the idea of riding our motorcycles around the perimeter of the state of Oregon, which where we're located. Now the reasons for motorcycles is we had just recently, both of us, started riding motorcycles to work. I had been riding for about a year. I'd come back to motorcycles from a young age. When I, when I was younger, I used to ride all the time. And then at, when, I got a little, when I got older, I, uh, I missed motorcycles and I went out and bought one. Well, Steve decided, after seeing me ride mine, he, I think he kind of kind of put the idea in his head that he uh, wanted a motorcycle. So we were both riding our motorcycles. And I think the story I did was probably just uh, an excuse to ride our motorcycles. But the plan was to ride the perimeter of the state and do a series of stories al along the way. Um, that we could run on, on a section front all summer long and kind of take the, the uh, reader on a little trip, on a little adventure. So there was two of us wanting to do this trip. Well, my, my cousin, Ed Patton, got wind of what, what we were doing and uh, <laughs> he thought that would be so cool that he uh, went out and bought a motorcycle and uh, he wanted to go with us on this grand adventure. And so to justify him being there, so well, he could shoot video for us because we were just getting into video production for our website. And we thought this would be a great project for, for the newspaper's website. So now there was three. At the time, there was a uh, pressman who, whose name was Rick Matson, that worked at the paper. And he rode a motorcycle to work. 
and he got wind of our little adventure and he said I'd love to be a part of this <laughs> and so there was four and that's where it was the four of us heading out on an adventure telling the story for our readers and we named the project On the Edge in Oregon Yeah, good girl. Well, the On the Edge project ended up being a big success. Our readers just kept coming back for more and they, they loved it. So we ran the series all summer long with photos and, and uh, video installments on the website. It was, even years later, I would get somebody come up to me and say, were you one of those guys that did the On the Edge thing? thing <laughs> riding motorcycles around the state and uh yeah it was it was i was amazed that even non-cyclists just loved the series so we were taking them into places that um they hadn't you know a lot hadn't been to a long time or something they were just a, a connection with the state we were able to tell stories meet up with people it was uh it was just a great, a great, a great, a great series. So the following year, we enjoyed doing that the on the edge project so much in, in Oregon that we said, "Well, why don't we do it again? Let's just do, let's do Washington. We don't have to do it for the paper. We'll just do it for ourselves. We'll make it fun, and we'll ride the perimeter of Washington and uh, have a great adventure." And that's what we did. And it was about that time that I decided, well. I need a website so I can share these adventures with my family and friends. And what I did is I named the website Riding the Edge. It was ridingtheedge.net. You know, we're on motorcycles. And that just seemed to work. It was a playoff of the first series. And that was the birth of Riding the Edge. And so every year, for about five years after that, we would pick a, a place it wasn't so much about riding the perimeter state after that. It was it was about finding a good route through uh, basically the western part of the United States. We rode to Death Valley, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, South Dakota, you know, places like Mount Rushmore, Glacier National Park. It was uh, it was just a great run. We uh, really had a good time. It was. Uh, an adventure every every year but those, I, I have fond memories of of those trips some some great people and places that we met some uh, e excitement some adventure right <laughs> getting caught in snowstorms and high wind storms and it was just every trip was was its own fantastic adventure and eventually my motorcycle just wore out and at the time I just couldn't afford to replace it And after a while, Riding the Edge really became less about motorcycles and more of a, about a, a philosophy, a way of living. It's about trying to stay out of the mainstream. It's about not trying to take the comfortable way. It's about taking the hard way. Because most often the hard way is the most rewarding way. You got it. Jump. Jump. Let's go. Jump. Come on. Good girl. I came across a video quite a few years ago of uh, an interview with one of my favorite photographers, a photographer that influenced me quite a lot when I was uh, starting out and learning. And that was Galen Rao. And in this video, Galen Rao says something that really stuck with me. Let me, let me read a quote. Galen Rao says, The edges of things in nature are the most beautiful. The edge of a continent next to the sea. The edge of a meadow next to a forest. The edge of light where light tapers off into dark. That quote really 
gave my name validation. That, that, that is right in the edge. That's what we're looking for. Well, I hope that clears, clears, up, uh, <laughs> clears up something for you. No one probably really even cares, but uh, I really just wanted to um, tell the story of why this is important to me, why Riding the Edge is the name of my YouTube channel and my website, Riding the Edge Photography. It, uh, it's really my philosophy of life. Well, Nori's been a good sport, so we're gonna, I'm gonna get back to uh, doing a little puppy walking and playing in the, in the forest. So I'm gonna end today's video right here. Until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride. Oh my goodness, he's down in the whole bottle. That doesn't look like it tastes and look like it tastes and look like it tastes that great. Hey Steve, doesn't bad Rick look bad? <laughs> yeah, I mean he looks way cooler than he actually is. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we can't go. Yeah, we can't go on the trail because we're motorcyclists. <laughs> All right, well, let's just head back to Oregon, huh? Okay. Ed, Ed's thoughts on where we're going next. <laughs> it's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. Don't, don't waste your time coming here. It's been a long day. Yeah. <laughs> That's all.